Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. We're going to look at a couple examples to kind of practice our approach for identifying what kind of weld analysis we need to perform. So first taking a look at this particular weld, we look at this and we say, all right, uh, what kind of weld is this? Is this a simplified weld? Is this a non-simplified weld? Is this in-plane, out-of-plane? So our first determination is determined whether we're in-plane uh, or out-of-plane. We look at this, we see all the welds are in a plane. We see the loading is also going through that plane. So this is actually a simplified weld. It's a simplified box weld because it's a box weld and uh, it's loaded in plane. So this is a simplified in-plane box weld. However, once we've noticed that, we look at this further, we get ready to calculate the loads of the centroid, we find out the only load is a force through the centroid. This means it's even simpler than that. All we need to analyze is P over A for this weld. P over the area of the complete weld. So we can summarize our approach as it's an in-plane weld. It is a simplified box weld. The stress is simply P over A since that load goes through the centroid. Now we look at this guy. So, all right, what's going on here? Looks like once again, we're in plane. It looks like we're a snake bite weld this time. So therefore this is also simplified. However, once again, the only loading on this is a force through the centroid. Therefore, our stresses are simply P over A. Doing anything else is just wasting our time. We look at this guy and we see, okay, looks like once again, we have an in-plane weld. And we see that the load is going right through the middle of this bar. However, when we look at that, Weld, we see that is not, that is a simplified weld, yes, but the centroid is not at the center of the bar because that is actually an angle weld. An angle weld rotated 90 degrees. Since that's an angle weld rotated 90 degrees, that force does not go through the centroid of the weld pattern, and therefore we need to calculate the moment at the center. This means we're going to have to we can actually use our simplified weld procedure, but we will have to calculate the moment at the centroid and we'll have a force and a moment in our weld calculation. Another thing is, if we look at our handbook, we find out that the X bar, Y bar of this weld is specified for a weld like this, and our weld is like that. Therefore, we need to take care to show that the X bar is uh, or the uh, Y bar is coming from the upper corner and it's called X bar in our table. So what's called X bar and Y bar in our handbook is actually going to be the Y bar and the X bar in this figure. And they're going to be oriented not from the lower left corner, but from the upper left corner. So we're going to need to translate that to make sure we get the proper location. Then we'll calculate our moment based on the eccentricity of that PX to the center of the pattern, we'll have a force and a moment, and then we can continue with our weld stress calculations by determining our properties of the weld pattern using our simplified JU, and then turn that into a J, calculate our stress components in the X and the Y, and the resultant at each and every point. We're gonna have three points. This says each of four corners, there's actually only three corners here. We see uh, only going to have these three corners here. This is a typo. Three corners. We're going to have one here because this weld goes here and this weld goes here. Let me erase that since my pen bled. And that can confuse folks that are new to this. So we see we've got this weld and we've got this weld. Therefore, we're gonna have this point, this point, and this point are the three points that might be critical and need to be checked. Got that? We look at this weld here, 
we see another snake bite weld. This is a snake bite weld, but it's rotated 90 degrees. It's an in-plane weld. Our loading does not go through the centroid of the pattern, but since it's a simplified weld, we can use our simplified procedure. Therefore, we identify it as an in-plane weld and a simplified snake bite rotated 90 degrees, which means we'll translate our X bar, Y bar into the new orientation. Our stress calculation then will be to determine our properties using the simplified procedure, calculate our JU, turn that into a J, calculate our stresses at each and every one of the four corners. If we look at this guy, we say, okay, once again, looks like we have another snake bite weld rotated 90 degrees. We're going to have to transfer our loads to the centroid. We can use our simplified procedure. We'll have to calculate our stresses at each of the four points. Got it? We look at this guy. Okay, it looks like another in-plane weld, and it looks like we have another snake bite weld rotated. But then we look at it again, and we say, wait a minute. As we see this weld, let's take a look at this a little closer. We see this is a back-to-back -back weld, which means we've got a back-to-back -back weld along this and one over here. These two are not the same length, therefore it's not a snake bite weld. This is not a simplified weld. It cannot use that procedure. It's very common for students to incorrectly assign this as a snake bite weld, and it ain't. Therefore, we're going to have to use a table to get our properties. So it's not a simple, it is a in plane weld. It's not simplified since our weld lengths are different. When we do our calculation, we're going to need to construct our table of properties like we learned in the last lecture. We then will determine our properties for this weld. We will move our load to the centroid. We're going to have a two forces, one on the X, one on the Y, and a moment in the Z. Uh, well, actually, this is incorrect. We are not calculating JU because we're going to get J out of our table. So that's not correct. And I think our next step is also incorrect because we're going to just get, uh, actually, we can just cross out this one. We're just going to get J from table. And then we'll calculate our stresses at each of the four corners. That means this one, this one, this one, and this one. Any of those could be critical depending on the relative magnitude of the loads. If we take a look at this guy here, we see that these loads are going to actually pull that weld out of plane. The weld, this is a simplified box weld in a single plane, but the components of stress are going to pull components of the weld out of the plane of the weld. Therefore, this is an out-of-plane weld. It is a simplified out-of-plane weld, so we can actually use our properties our simplified properties, IU, which we turn into I, and then we calculate our stress components at each of the four corners. Got that? Here's another one. This also looks like our stresses, our loads, are going to cause out of plane components. It looks like this is a rotated snake bite weld, and so we can use our simplified procedure to get our properties. We have one like this. This is an example out of Shigley. We can see once again those that's a snake bite weld and the, the loading is pulling some components out of plane. So this is an out of plane loading and we can use simplified property since it is a snake bite weld. We can use Shigley's method to calculate our IU which we turn into an I we can then get our components of stress. Those are the way Shigley does it. What I tell you guys to do is to calculate our properties and then calculate our I in this manner and calculate our tau, our stress in the X and the Y direction and then combine those with a root mean squared. So that is some uh, hints on how to analyze, how to recognize what kind of weld we have. Is it in plane or out of plane? Can we use a simplified procedure or a, do we need the detailed procedure? Enjoy.